Hello, welcome to Einstein Mechanics. In this tutorial, we are going to tackle stationary point. It's quite interesting and it's one of the applications of what differentiation. So let's take a look at this curve. Oh, we have a curve plotted within the x and y what plane. And when you take a look at this curve, there is a point on the curve where it begins to turn here there is a point p with a coordinate x and y and this curve begins to turn again there is a point q both x and y coordinate where this curve begins to turn again and here the point where it begins to turn they are called the stationary point there we go so p is one stationary point and Q is also another stationary point and this stationary point is either a maximum or a minimum point is either minimum or a maximum point so we can see that P is a maximum what point because it is the highest peak of the curve can we see that it is the highest peak of the curve where q is the minimum point because it is also the lowest of the curve so we are going to find ways of determining this coordinate the point where the curve begins toward 10 so our p is the maximum point and our q is the what the minimum point then we'll take a look at this graph also. So this is the B. And looking at this graph, there is a maximum point, there is a minimum point. So can we say here, we call this place M as the maximum point because it is the maximum as compared to all the points on the plotted axis. So X1, Y1 is the maximum point. We can also check this point as n and we will see that it is the minimum point so x2 y2 as the minimum point can we have a look at this point we call it x and let's call here big y at this point the curve is neither maximum nor minimum it's quite looking a straight line is either turning or not turning and this point we call it the point of inflection are we good the point where it is neither a maximum point or a minimum point we call it the point of inflection inflection so our x is a point of inflection and our y is also a point of what inflection how do we determine these three points so on a curve we have a maximum point a minimum point and a point of what inflection how do we determine this let's look at the procedure first you'll be given your y or the equation of the curve so first you'll be given a y which is also an f of x meaning the equation which is the equation of the curve equation of the curve are we good then to find the minimum or maximum or point of inflection you have to determine your dy dx are we good you find the derivative of the equation so we have our equation given for the curve. We now determine its derivative. Are we good? Then the third point is we substitute the values of x into the original equation to find the corresponding y value. What it means is that first at the point of what? Or at the stationary point, the dy dx, the derivative dy the x will be equal to a zero are we good so with this derivative equal to zero we can find the values of x to know where the curve is was stationary or turning are we good 
then we substitute or we put in let's make it simple put in the values of x into the original equation that's the y equation to obtain values to obtain values of what of y are we good so now that you have values of x you now put it in the y equation to obtain the value of what y at the corresponding point either at the minimum or the maximum point or the point of what inflection now how do we determine the nature of the curve we now know the point of what stationary or the point of what turning that's our x and y how do we know that this point x and y is a maximum or a minimum point to determine its nature for you have to find the second derivative of the equation so you find the second derivative we know how to find second derivative so you find the second derivative of the equation of the equation and after finding the second derivative of the equation if there is still an x in the derivative you put in the values of x that you obtained from the third point and if the condition is if your second derivative is positive if putting it in you get a positive value or after the second derivative you get a positive value meaning your curve is at the point of what minimum it's a minimum what point so let's assume i've gotten the values of x and y as 2 and what 4 after the second derivative i'll put in the value of x which is 2 if the answer runs positive meaning this curve is what a minimum point if it turns out to be what negative then our point is what a maximum a maximum point are we good it's a maximum point and if it is zero if it turns out to be zero meaning the point is a point of what point of inflection so these are the conditions that we are going to apply in solving our examples you just have to find the derivative of the equation of the curve given then after that you put in the you solve for the values of what x because at the stationary point the y dx is zero so you can equate the derivative to zero and solve for the values of what x after obtaining the value of x or the values you can put it back in the equation y to obtain the corresponding what y to give you the point now you know the stationary point that at this point the curve is what turning or it is a point of what inflection but how do you know the nature are we good how do you know that this point is minimum or maximum or point of inflection you don't find the second derivative of the equation again and if after the second derivative it turns out to be positive meaning your point obtained is a minimum point if it is negative it is a maximum point and if it is zero then that point is a point of what inflection so simple let's look at some examples and see how best we can solve this part are you okay with the examples we will understand best how we can go by this example one locate the turning point on the curve y equal 3x squared minus 6x and determine its nature so we are always given the equation of the curve as 3x squared minus 6x and we are to find the turning point at what point does this curve turns and if it is turning is that turning a maximum a minimum or, or a point of inflection so first the rule or the procedure is find the derivative of this 
equation. So our the y with respect to x is now going to give us 6x minus 6. So we obtain the values of what x at which there is a turning what point. And we know that at the turning point or at the stationary point, at the stationary point, the y dx, put in mind, the y dx at the stationary point is 0. So if it is 0, can I say 6x minus 6 is equal to 0? And my 6x is equal to 6. x will be equal to what? 1. So I now have the value of what? y or x to be 1. So the curve is turning at a value x equal to 1. To get the corresponding y remember it's a point a coordinate which is supposed to have x and y what coordinate so my y which is giving us 3x squared and i know my x now to be 1 squared minus 6 of 1 and with this my y is going to be negative 3 meaning the turning point or yes the turning point of this curve the turning point of the curve is x coordinate 1 and negative 3. And we have to determine its nature. Is it a minimum, maximum, or inflection point? So with that, you have to find the second derivative. The second derivative of the equation. And looking at this, this is the first derivative. If you find the second derivative of this, you are going to get what? 6. And our second derivative is a positive value. Are we okay? And from the rule, if it is positive value, then it is a minimum point. A minimum point. Are we good? It is a minimum point. And if we try to plot this, and we are going to get yes, 1, and this is a negative 3, so meaning the, the point is meeting somewhere here and the curve will be something like this. So it is a minimum what? It is coming down. It's a minimum point. Are we getting it? All right. So this is the first part of how to find. The second example, locate the turning point on the following curve and determine whether it is a maximum or minimum point. So we have our curve as y equal 4 theta plus e negative theta. Are we good? So first, find the first derivative. So this, we are going to differentiate y with respect to what theta. There's no x, so theta. So the theta, and this is going to be 4. When you differentiate this, it is going to be negative e negative that. We saw this in our differentiation episode so you can go back and check so this is the derivative and since we are interested in turning point at the turning point since dy dx is equal to zero at the turning point then i have to obtain the values of for theta so now our theta is now representing the x values are we good so this will be 4 minus e negative theta equal to 0. Since this is equal to 0. To obtain theta, can I say, if I take this to the side, I'm going to get e negative theta equal to 4. This is established. And we know that this point is the same as 1 over e raised to the power theta equal to 4. And I can further say that this e to the power theta is the same as 1 over 4. To get theta, we take the natural what? log of both sides. So I'll apply ln e to the power e and ln of 1 of 4. And with this, if this meets an e function, it tends to be what? 1. And 1 by this, we are going to get our theta. So when you punch in the value of ln of 1 over 4, we are getting negative 
3863. Meaning the curve is turning at the point theta, which represents our x, negative 1.3863. So to get the corresponding y value, we bring in the value of what theta to get the y value. Therefore, our y will be 4 multiplying 1.3863 and e to the negative, negative 1.38. And when you punch this on your calculator, then your y value is also negative 1.542. As this, therefore, the turning point of the curve will be the turning point will be theta, which is negative 1.3863, then y negative 1.545. Are we good? These are the turning points, and what is the nature of the point? maximum or minimum so the second derivative of y with respect to theta square so i'm going to differentiate this again and when you differentiate this to the second time you are going to get e raised the power negative theta are we okay and with this is this a positive or a negative value to give us maximum or what minimum and I told you, or the procedure says, if you find the second derivative and it is positive, how do we know this is positive or negative? We put in the value of theta now to check if this is positive. So, which is going to be put E negative, but theta is also negative 1.3863. And when you punch this on the calculator, you are going to get what? 4. Since this is a positive value, meaning the curve it is a minimum point quite interesting i will okay it's a minimum point so once you go through this procedure you are good to go is that okay it's very simple and easy to come by any question under this let me know in the comment section just drop it Example 3. The curve y equals 4x squared plus a on x plus 5 has a stationary point. Since it is a curve, it has a stationary point. Find the value of the positive constant a, given that the y coordinate of the stationary point is 32. So this is somehow an application question. With this question, we are giving the equation of the curve as y equals 4x squared plus a on x plus 5. And we are seeing that there is a missing or a constant a. And we also have the y value for the stationary point. So the y value is 32. We are to use the idea of solving to obtain this constant what a so what comes in mind first we have to find the first derivative of this curve which is the y with respect to what dx are we good the y with respect to dx and with that can we first re rewrite the equation again to get it clearly this equation y is the same as 4x squared plus a this x is the same as x negative 1 plus 5 so that the differentiation will be very simple and my dy dx is going to be with this 8x and with that this negative will come so negative a x minus 1 negative 2 this plus 5 will go to 0 so we are getting this and we know that at the stationary point the y dx is 0 so at the stationary point 
our dy with respect to the x is equal to zero so i can equate all this to zero meaning 8x minus a x negative 2 should be equal to what zero so i'm going to deal with this equation which is the same as 8x minus a on x square equal to zero if i multiply through by x square this is going to give me 8s cubed minus a equal to 0. So can I say my a is equal to 8s cubed as my equation 1? I'm to find the constant a, but a is 8s cubed. So once I know the value of x, I can bring it here and know the value of what? a. This is just an equation form. So since I also know the value of the y coordinate can i say this whole equation since the y coordinate is 32 then my 32 will be equal to 4x square and this but i now know that a is in the form of 8x cube so can i bring it 8s cube still over a certain x plus what 5 is that good I want to take care of the fraction so i'll multiply through by this x and i'm going to get 32 x equal to 4 s cube plus 8 s cube plus 5 x is that true yes so when i group like terms this and that this 32 also cross then i'm going to get 12 s cube then minus 27 this will go minus 27 x everything will be equal to zero can i factorize x out from here so can this will be x out leaving 12 x square minus a certain 27 equal to zero so with this i can say 1 x is equal to zero then my 12x square minus 27 will also be equal to zero solving this further i will be left with 12x equal to 27 if you divide both sides by 12 then i'm getting x square equal to 3 on 2 27 on 12 3 on what Two. this will be if you divide the 27 by 12 you are getting 9 on what 4 9 on 4 then i'll take the square root of both sides giving me x is equal to since there is a square root plus or minus plus or minus square root of 9 3 square root of 4 will be 2 so now my x is equal to plus or minus 2 are we okay so x is either 3 on 2 or negative 3 on 2 but looking at the question it says find the value of the positive constant a so meaning a should be a positive word value are we okay so when we put in the value of one of the x we should obtain a positive a so let's see which one will give us positive so a is equal to 8 x now which is 3 on 2 cube and with that i'm getting my a to be what 27 as positive if you put in a which is negative 3 on 2 cube you are getting negative 27 which is not accepted so now my a is the positive part which is 27 are we okay therefore a is equal to 27 if you like putting the value of a27 then go through the process of finding the y coordinate again you are going to get your 32 and this is interesting are we okay this is very interesting let's tackle the fourth example so we end it here we are given some equations it says find the coordinates of the stationary point for these curves so we have some series of what curves we have to find its 
stationary point first i have a which is y equals i have 3x squared plus 5x 3x squared plus sorry this is minus 5x and plus 2 is that okay to find the stationary point we must first differentiate this equation so my dy on dx is going to give me 6x minus 5 and since dy dx is 0 at the stationary point 6x minus 5 will be equal to 0 and with that my x is going to be 5 on 6 now i have the value of the x meaning the y is going to be 3 on 5 on 6 squared minus 5 on 5 on 6 plus 2 with that my y is going to be negative 1 on 12 therefore with the first equation our stationary point is going to be x which is 5 on 6 and this is negative 1 on 12 if you want to know the nature of the curve you further differentiate this which will be it is not x here but the square y on the x here will give us what 6 meaning this is what a minimum point it is minimum since it is positive with the b part i have this equation as y equals 2s cubed plus 3x squared minus 12 plus 1 so 12x plus 1 dy dx is going to be when you differentiate that you are going to get 6x squared plus 6x minus 12 and at the stationary point dy dx is equal to 0 so meaning 6x squared plus 6x minus 12 should be equal to 0 this is a quadratic equation are we okay and when you solve this using the quadratic approach then your x is going to be two values one is negative two or x is equal to one so here we are having two values meaning we are going to have two turning points so you put in the value of x equals negative two into the equation to obtain its corresponding y you put in y x equal to one to also obtain its corresponding y are we okay so when x is equal to negative 2 then our y will be equal to so y of 2 will be equal to 2x cubed so 2 by negative 2 cubed plus 3 by negative 2 square minus 12 by negative 2 plus 1 and with that our corresponding y is going to be 21 so one of the turning point is giving us negative 2 21 what if it is 1 because we obtain two values for x what if it is 1 then we will also obtain another value when x is equal to 1 then our equation will be y equal 2 by 1 cube plus 3 by 1 square minus 12 by 1 plus 1 are you okay then we are also going to obtain the same equation and with that if i punch my y is going to be negative 6 so the second point is going to be 1 and negative 6. 
are we okay? So therefore, the turning points are one negative six and the other one is also negative to 21. So you can now test which one gives the maximum point and which one gives the minimum point by further differentiating the second derivative. So the second derivative of y is going to be, since the other one was 6x squared plus 6x, so this is going to be 12x plus 6 for the second derivative. Are we good? So the second derivative is going to be this. And when you put in this value of 1, considering this point, then our d square y, the x is going to be 12 by 1 plus 6. And with that, we are going to get 18, right? So 18. So this point gives us a positive value. I mean, this is the minimum point. And with that, if you are putting in the value of the x, which is negative 2, our d square y on the x square is going to be 12 negative 2 plus 6. And with that, we are going to get, this is giving us negative 24 plus 6. And we are getting a negative 18. Since it is negative, this is a maximum. So this point is giving us the maximum what? Point. Is that good? Let's look at the last example of it. When y is equal to x on root of x minus x. How do we go by this? So, the third point. Y is equal to x on root of x minus x. Can we rewrite this equation as y is equal to x multiplying, this is x negative half. Because root is half here, when you bring it up, it becomes negative half minus x. Indices, the same powers. So we add the powers and this is 1. So 1 plus half. And that is also going to give us x raised to the power what? Half minus x. So we now differentiate the y with respect to x. I'm getting half x minus 1. Another negative half. When you differentiate this, you are getting 1. Is that okay? dy dx is now 0. So I can equate this whole thing to 0. Half of x negative half minus 1 equal to 0. Is that okay? Can I multiply through by 2? Giving me x raised to the power negative half minus 2 equal to 0. And this can also be written as x raised to the power positive half. I'll take this two to the other side. Is that correct? If I want to obtain the positive side of the of this, I'll sw switch them. So this will be x raised to the power 1 on 2 equal to half. Is that correct? To get rid of this, I'll square both sides. So that this two will cancel. This giving me x is equal to 1 on 4. So the x value for this equation is 1 on 4. And to get the corresponding y value, you have to put the 1 on 4 into this equation. So y will be 1 on 4 raised to the power half minus x, which is 1 on 4. And when you punch this, your y is also 1 on 4. Therefore, the stationary point for this is giving us 1 on 4 and 1 on 4. This is interesting. Thank you for watching this episode. Watch out for the next episode.